I used to suck at language learning, but after years of failing, I took a different approach and it totally changed everything. I spent the last year getting input in Spanish without speaking the language at all. And I've learned a huge amount about the language learning process and how to keep going without saying a single word. It's completely changed my approach to language learning. And in this video, I'm gonna share everything that I've learned that will hopefully help your language learning too. And I also have to take the dog out. So first and foremost, an input-only approach makes language learning and the process of getting some language in every day really easy. I don't have to worry about anything else I'm doing in the day. I don't have to worry about my production of the grammar, trying to sit down and memorize vocabulary. I'm just focusing on using comprehensible input material, so material for learners that's graded depending on my level, and I just have to try and understand that. It makes the process so, so simple that it seems a bit like, Surely I should be doing more than this, but without having to overcomplicate it, I'm starting to understand stuff for natives. A language is something that you get implicitly. You can sit down and study and sort of do the explicit stuff where I'm trying to memorize rules and lists of vocabulary. It's not fun, and I'd say it doesn't really work for me. I've tried that before. It was boring. I stopped doing it. It is a really hot day today, guys, so I'm out really early with old Ralph, who's having a sniff. Being a black dog on a hot day is not ideal, is it? So the next point that I want to cover is habits. It's clear to me that habit formation is possibly the most important thing that you can do when it comes to language learning. What are you doing every day where you're having meaningful interaction with the language? I'm not doing a little bit of a quiz occasionally, a couple of times a week. I have focused on just trying to get something that I mostly understand, not all of, but I mostly understand every single day. And over time, that's really racked up the hours so that now I am understanding more stuff that before I couldn't at all, and then I, hasn't, I haven't had to do any studying. Now, some languages, I grant you, when I go back to doing Chinese, I probably will have to do some flashcards to remember some of the characters. But sitting around doing flashcards all day won't get you fluent. That's just something to prime your brain before you get into this meaningful interaction with the language, which is mostly, I would say, just comprehensible input. But whatever you want to do, if you want to do lots of translating of stuff, that's fine, it's your journey. I'm not gonna judge you. I'm getting eaten by bugs, so we're gonna to have to keep moving. And just a small thing to add on to habits as well. Don't wait for motivation to strike you. If you're trying to wait for that perfect moment when you feel like trying to get some of the language, there's not gonna happen enough times necessarily for you to do it regularly to get the input that you need to get. Once you get going, maybe you feel motivated endlessly. But first of all, just build a habit. I am not going to feel motivated every time I do it, but there is something that I have to do when I do walking the dog, for example, and that's putting on some Spanish listening. That's not an option. I just have to do that every time I'm walking the dog. And so every day I'm going to get exposure to the language. Right, so the next one is you're not gonna understand everything 100% of the time. So when I was first sort of getting into language learning, I thought there's this thing of like, you either understand it, you don't understand it. As I said before, things are unclear, first of all, and you have to get okay with the fact that you're not going to understand it, and that's fine. Providing you're understanding enough and you can enjoy the content, don't worry about things being absolutely certain. Sometimes what I find is if there's a really key word that I just, it's, it's repeated numerous times, I don't understand it, and for whatever reason I haven't got it from the context, and I'm then missing out on the story, then yeah, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna look it up, let's be honest. Um, that, that saves me a huge amount of headache as opposed to just waiting for that opportune moment when suddenly my brain gets it. But if it's the description of something, I don't need to know exactly how someone did something. I just, I can get a sense of it from the, the rest of the text or, or the story of someone speaking. And it's just being okay with that. Like, just, just enjoy it. Don't judge it. Don't go, oh, I'm not learning fast enough. I'm... You're enjoying content in a language that isn't your native language. That's really cool. Just enjoy that. That seems like a really cool thing to do. So being okay with uncertainty. Now there's a certain amount of discipline in keeping consistent and initially doing things that maybe aren't that fun in the beginning, but you do need to get a base in the language in order to then start to use some different material. Especially in the beginning, 
you sort of have to find enjoyment in the knowledge that you're slowly acquiring the language before you see any real results. Especially in the early stages, you're like, well, I'm watching these videos or listening to podcasts that are fine, but is it as compelling as something that I might watch in English? Potentially not. But can I feel myself getting better in the language? Mm, yeah, I can. Actually, I realized that video that before was quite hard, that's now really easy. And this video that before I didn't really understand, yeah, I can follow along with it now. Those small steps over time build up into acquiring the language naturally, having an implicit sense of the language and how it's used and the grammar and everything else. Just get that habit, start building this natural understanding of the language and it will come. Now, something else that's apparent to me is I could have sped up this process by doing flashcards. That's undeniable, I think, in terms of priming your brain to get vocabulary. What I would also say is I don't like flashcards, so I haven't done them. I think you have to do what you enjoy doing with language learning. And there is something else um, I saw an interview with Dr. Jeff McQuillan, uh, who was talking about the opportunity cost of any activity we do in language learning. And I could have sat down for half an hour to an hour a day. I'm not going to do an hour a day of flashcards, um, but doing, doing flashcards if I really wanted to. But what's the opportunity cost there? Like at the minute, now I'm getting into reading Spanish. Every day when I'm reading Spanish, I'm enjoying a story that's motivating me to keep up with the language. I'm reinforcing my grammar and vocabulary I already know, seeing new words in context. What's the opportunity cost if I don't do that and I do something else, like flashcards? I don't have an answer on that one, but it's certainly an interesting idea, isn't it? Uh, I don't know any studies as also, also that, that um, look at that. And I know the, the instant answer for the flashcard enthusiasts is, well, surely you do flashcards with sentences on them. Random sentences that are just isolated and don't give me any motivation to continue reading, whereas in a story, I want to find out what happens, especially if it's, if it's a novel. I find if it is something that is non-fiction, quite often if it's not written as a story, there is less incentive to keep reading. It's just facts and advice sometimes. Whereas a story, oh yeah, there's this weird, interesting character and I want to see what happens to them. To be honest, I'm quite happy with what I've done. I'm in no rush. This is, I'm in, in this for the long haul. So the fact that maybe I could have saved myself a few months by feeling like I had acquired more vocabulary, mm, yeah, fine. I'm not losing any sleep over it. So as ever, it's your journey. You do what you want to do. I'm doing what I want to do and I'm having a nice time. Everybody seems to be making videos about time and how quickly you can learn languages, which I do understand, of course. But I think the most important thing we can optimize for is enjoyment. And that is what will keep you going over the long term. So if your habit isn't sustainable, you're not gonna do it. You won't last. It's your journey. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing, how quickly other people seem to be doing well in the language or whatever. Just pick up some of the language every day. Keep going, you'll notice you're getting better. You've got other responsibilities, I'm sure. We're all adults. But if you feel like, oh, I am, I am making progress in the language, I can feel I'm understanding more stuff. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's learning a language, right? That's what, that's what you want. So don't worry about going, how can I optimize my time? The more time you spend working out how to optimize and be the most productive, firstly, there's high risk of burnout. Secondly, if you're not doing it in your target language, you're not being exposed to your target language. So just get exposure to your target language. Make sure you understand enough of it. Try and enjoy it. Do that every day. That feels a little bit too simple, but start with that and then see if it works for you. Firstly, why am I lying on the floor? I don't know, don't overthink it. So anyone who, um, who watches the channel will know I'm a big fan of Crosstalk and this last year has made me realize how insanely powerful Crosstalk is. Like you could go from zero to fluency in with Crosstalk, providing someone talks about the talks about the right things. For anyone who is new to the channel, firstly, hi, thank you, welcome. Crosstalk is basically you talk to someone else in your native language, most likely, they talk back to you in your target language. You start off super easy, probably using some drawings to explain whatever you're trying to say so they can try and understand you. And as you get more advanced, you 
the, the drawings go to one side you can just talk naturally so you're not trying to produce the language the language emerges when you're ready and it's just been it's just been absolutely phenomenal i'd never tried it until spanish and i've got two tutors that i talked to so one for example last week we were talking about globalization and culture and loads of really interesting things Ralph is eating grass by the way if that's what you can hear um, loads of really interesting things that if I didn't have a high enough level of Spanish there's no way I'd be able to keep up my end of the conversation I can still understand his end but if I couldn't understand so if I couldn't explain my thoughts well enough it doesn't give him any anything to come back with when we're having a conversation with because I'm using English I can then come up with some examples and explain them hold on crosstop really really incredible if you're if you haven't tried it and you're not that confident at speaking the language I know we're gonna go in a sec if you haven't tried it or you're not that confident in speaking a language honestly really really worth trying highly recommended as soon as I go back to Chinese I'm tempted to even use it for for that so I don't know yes all right right I don't necessarily love language learning but I love the results. I love the process of understanding a culture that I wasn't exposed to before and potentially multiple cultures if we're talking about learning Spanish. And that is the thing that really motivates me to keep going. So whilst some days I feel like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd like to be better than I am. Well, I've learned all this stuff about Spain and Spanish culture and Latin America, which is like a whole other world. That's incredible. So sometimes a bit of a focus on the end result and the process of getting to that end result rather than the binary thing of, I haven't achieved my goals, I've achieved my goals. That's not really how it works, is it? There's so much cool, interesting stuff that I watch on YouTube now, that's in Spanish. And I'm like, wow, that, these, are, these are really interesting creators that I never would have known about had I not started learning Spanish. And now I just use those to acquire the language. And that is just so incredible. That's part of the results I'm after in that I can live some of my life in another language. It isn't you get to the end, it's just, oh yeah, I'm further forward. And maybe it's a nice windy road and that's enjoyable because you can enjoy the journey and see the sights. That sounds like a nice thing to me. Now, there's something else which certainly when I was less experienced, I didn't know. And I think we all need to remind ourselves of sometimes anyway language learning isn't difficult it just takes longer than people expect a child who acquires their first language yes the process is slightly different but don't overthink it a child who acquires their first language has got thousands of hours of input before they start speaking and yeah there's some cognitive developmental stuff going on there again don't overthink it but in order for someone to have sort of advanced vocabulary in a language just takes them years. And so don't expect that you're gonna do a few, a few flashcards and watch some videos on YouTube and suddenly you're at the advanced stage. Consistency and habit building, it's not about trying to force your brain to do stuff it's not ready for. Just expose it to the language, start simple, like really simple, and gradually it will pick it up. It just takes longer than probably you think it does. And that's it. I don't think that immersion in native level material is that productive for me if I don't understand what's going on. For me, I would much rather listen to stuff that I understand more of, that feels more productive for me, but I'm also not worrying about how productive I'm being because that's a whole other thing. There's enough to worry about in life. Be kind to yourself. If you're getting exposed to the language, you're picking up some of it, great, just keep going. And to add to that quickly, immersion in comprehensible input material is a very different story. You're just racking up your hours of understanding the language and picking things up naturally. So people talk about immersion and we're all talking about different things. If you're immersing in comprehensible input material, stuff that you mostly understand but slightly above your level, you're gonna learn the language and you're probably gonna learn it quicker than if you, on occasion, sat down and studied. And then there's this fun point at a certain stage, once you've got going, you can start to move away from stuff that is for learners and start to move towards stuff that is for native speakers. So anything that you want to learn 
that you might have done in English, if that's your native language, you can learn it in whatever your target language is. So I'm learning all this extra vocabulary to do with cameras and weird things like that, which is super cool. So your language learning doesn't necessarily have to stick to language learning material. You're not gonna be able to do that first of all. So you do need to get going and then hopefully you can move on to other stuff that you would just do naturally. So that's everything I've learned from the last year about language learning that has changed my approach. I'm much more relaxed about the whole, whole process and I hope it's helped you in some way as well. If you want to learn a bit more about language learning, check out these videos here. That's gonna get you going. Any questions, let me know down below. If you haven't subscribed, do that already. Share some of your tips down below as well if you've got some tips that have helped you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in these videos up here. Bye.